Hey y'all and welcome to another episode of Intro to Metalsmithing. In this episode we'll be going over etching with ferric nitrate. Here's an example of some of the items you may need in order to get starting with etching. I've got gloves, you want to protect your hands because it will stain your fingers. I have copper tongs here, a sharpie to fill in any holes in the resist, a burnisher, we're using sterling silver in this tutorial, duct tape, baking soda, and I use the plastic container to put the water and baking soda solution in. Um, your ferric nitrate solution, I use 300 grams of ferric nitrate crystal with 400 milliliters of water. I got um, pure acetone and cotton balls in order to remove the resist off the sterling silver after so you don't have to sand it off. Um, some glossy magazine paper and a slow cooker or just a stove top you need to be able to warm up the solution. After placing the ferric nitrate solution inside of the slow cooker with water inside of it and around it, I went ahead and turned on the slow cooker and I placed it on high just to get it up to temperature. Once it's warm you can go ahead and put it on low or warm while you're actually doing the etch. So to get started you want to print out your design onto the glossy printer paper. I use a laser printer and I just rip out a piece of the magazine paper and then I print my design onto it. It's important to know that when you print your design that it needs to have a black background and whatever you want etched you want it to be white or absent of color. And then we're going to go ahead and put this onto the silver. Also remember to put it backwards, so it should read as backwards. If it's not, it's supposed to be backwards. Um, so that whenever you place it onto the silver, it reads properly. I went ahead and printed it out on um, a dark piece as well as a lighter piece. And we'll see how they etch. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and use a pair of scissors and cut out the design that you want to use. Alright, next step is you want to put the resist onto the actual metal. So how I do this is on a stove top. Um, you can do any kind of heating plate, you can use an iron. I just use like a little pancake stove top. I put the heat to low and then once it's heated for a little bit you're going to need your tongs, your burnisher, and I also placed a bowl on the side with water so that once I take it off, I place it in the bowl of water. Um, so once this heats up, I'll get back to you. So we'll go ahead and place the piece with the design onto the heat plate. And one of the things that you really want to watch for is you'll start to notice that the paper will stick. That's when you know you're at the right temperature. You don't want it too hot. Like I said, I use low heat. And what I do is I use my burnisher and I kind of press on the edges. If it moves, it's not quite at the right temperature. You'll start to notice like the paper will start to curl on the ends. You'll notice that it might curl up and then it just kind of lays down flat and that's how you really know you're at the right temperature. Once you're at the right temperature, you'll begin burnishing the piece. You'll notice on one side we're starting to lift up, so I'm going to check press down lightly. You notice now when I press down instead of moving it's actually sticking so we're at the right temperature now. So I use my tongs to hold the piece down and then I just start rubbing on the glossy paper. If your paper starts moving you're not at temperature. So you just want to hold the piece down and start burnishing all over the piece to cause the resist to come off of the magazine paper and onto your piece. 
You really want to go in different directions. You want to move quickly because you don't want to burn the paper. But you do want to move in different directions because you want the resist to completely come off and go on to your piece. I'm using a design with a lot of lettering, so I absolutely need good coverage. If there's not a good resist, I might miss out like parts of the letters, which is not good. Once you're completely burnished in every direction, I push it off to the side so I can pick it up with my tongs and then I place it in my water dish. Now you're going to leave it in the water dish until it starts to come off by itself. So the magazine paper will start to lift off of the piece and you can rub it with your fingers in order to get it to work. You'll start to notice that the paper is getting softer so you can actually peel it off. Be careful not to like scratch your nails against the resist in case that starts to come up. But you can kind of run your thumb across like so. So this was the actual dark glossy paper and it looks like the resist held up well. So there you go. And then this was the lighter paper. Not quite ready to come up. Just softly run your finger against it. Next step is to protect the piece and prep it for etching. So I use duct tape and the way I use it is I put the piece with the back completely flat onto a piece of duct tape and I use smaller pieces of duct tape to trace around the piece. Keep doing that until you get all the way across and use a sharpie if you find any pieces inside of the etch that didn't completely transfer over. It's been a good 15 minutes of preheating the solution and now that we have our pieces prepped I went ahead and placed the piece on just you can use a stick a chopstick or like this is just a metal straw and I use it so I can actually place it inside of the solution without touching the solution and I can take it out as I need. Um, I place these in the solution for 15 minutes. If you do too much the resist starts to fail. So go ahead and place it like this. I kind of place it facing down slightly so that if there's any metal that is stuck inside the grooves it can fall away. In the meantime I have two solutions here. There are two plastic bins with water in it. This is actually from what we were just doing, but it'll work fine. Um, in this bin, I'm gonna add some baking soda in it because it's gonna neutralize the acid whenever it, it comes out. I don't have like a special amount. I just kind of pour some in here, mix it up. And then over here is just plain water so I can rinse it before putting it on um, a paper towel. Whenever you remove it, please wear gloves. It will stain your hands. So after 15 minutes, go ahead and remove it. You can see, we're gonna go ahead and place it into the baking soda solution with gloves on. So you're neutralizing it right now. Once you feel like it's neutralized, you don't see a lot of bubbles, we're gonna go ahead and place it. You can see how it's kind of turned black now. We'll place it in the water. 
Once we've kind of rinsed it off, we'll place it on a paper towel. Next step, we're going to use some acetone on a cotton swab to remove. You can see that this removes a lot easier than if you were to use sandpaper, which would also get rid of part of the edge. And here's the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.